Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Kiana Holloman and Emily Zarsk. How y'all doing, ladies? Good. Hey. How are you? Welcome back oh, from I'm Puerto doing... Rico. Oh, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I left all my Spanish in Puerto Rico, so now I'm back to uh, broken English in, in Dallas. So uh, just bear with me, okay? <laughs> back to the Louisiana <laughs> accent. Absolutely, absolutely. But but no, uh, I'm super excited about today's guest, and, and I, I can tell that you all are super excited about it because um, we all are familiar with this guest. You know, sometimes we have guests and, and I'm more familiar with them than, than you are and all this other stuff. But I think we right. all equally uh, can vibe out with this guest. So uh, without further ado, Kiana, please introduce today's guest. Today's guest is one of my favorite R&B artists. The Grammy nominated singer brought us hits like B-U-D-D-Y, So Beautiful and If You Leave. He's here today to discuss his successful music career, new collaborations in support of America's military. Please give a warm Chief Chat welcome to Music Soul Child. Hey. Peace and love, peace and love. <laughs> so Music Man, we're super excited to have you with us today. Uh, can you let our viewers know where you're coming to us from? Uh, I'm currently in Atlanta, Georgia. Well, on the outskirts of Atlanta, but you know, everybody say Atlanta, well, you know. Uh, it's a, a young rapper named uh, Redden told us, you know, <laughs> not necessarily from Atlanta. <laughs> not from Atlanta. But, yeah, that was a big red. Uh, but yeah, I'm out here in Georgia and that's where I'm, uh, I'm coming to you guys from. And music, just like Chief said earlier, we are all such big fans um, of you and your music. Your career spans decades and you received your first Grammy nomination in 2002. Take us back. How did you get your start in the industry? Well, <laughs> um, I don't, uh, I'm sure we don't have enough time for the long story, but the short story is um, I started recording in um, early 99 and I got a deal in 2000. Um, and I got a deal because um, the people that I was working with at the time, my managers were shopping me a deal unbeknownst to me because I was life was still life in so I didn't yeah. have another thing going on but they took a chance and um, had some meetings with some people and they had to call me when I was down here and say hey uh we got a meeting about getting you getting you a deal you know, where are you and I'm like hey I'm and they were in Philly which is where I'm from and I had to let them know hey I mean well my mind is not even on that. And next thing you know, I'm in, I'm in the, the Def Jam office talking about signing a record deal. And, and later that year of 2000, um, that's when I, I got my I got my record deal. And the rest is literally history. I, it's a whole lot of on the job training. I didn't get the whole, <laughs> you know, well, work up process and the whole artist development. It was like, hey, you're good, go. And it's like, bro, where's, we're not going to rehearse this? Like, no, <laughs> you're good enough. <laughs> figure it out. And here I am. So I guess I was built for this. I agree with that. Now, so I've grown up listening to your music. And um, I remember waking up like on a Saturday and my mom would be making breakfast in the kitchen and I would hear B-U-D-D-Y on the radio. So uh, I've grown up listening to you. Um, you even appeared on one of my favorite shows, The Game, the episode when Derwin wanted to propose to Melanie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so your music translates across generations. So what inspired your sound and what's your secret for creating hit after hit? Mm. So um there's a lot of there's a lot of things that go into, you know, my sound per se. A lot of the music that you guys have gotten was sort of me trying a lot of things. Um, like I said earlier. I didn't have the artist development process. I didn't go to school for it. Um, there was no training. There was no no coaching. It was just figure it out. So um, I think 
to your second question, um, the key to my, uh, I guess your question was to my key to my success. Um, it was just being willing to do the work, you know, whatever it is at whatever time. And because I really wasn't doing much else with my life and I was blessed with this opportunity, I just always um, sort of allowed myself to get into something new. It may have been different to right. uh, have all the information, but it was, it was, it was, it was, you know, attainable. It was right there. And I could conceive it. I could see it. Okay. I see how we, if I do this, then it will work. And from that, I started to develop um, almost like a, a new sound from that. You know, we all have ideas on what we would like to do um, before we start to become successful, but that's coming from um, just our perspective at that time. But when I started getting into the music business and the industry and started learning all the mechanics of how things actually go, and you start to change your ideas and like, okay, that's, that sounds great, but that's going to take a whole lot of money and you need a whole lot of credibility and you ain't got that yet. So you got to pay your dues and people got to know who you are to even listen to what you have to say. So you got to prove that you even know what you're doing first for people to take a chance on you. So that really shifted my perspective on what it means uh, to be, you know, uh, a, a creative in that space. And it has a lot to do with things that have nothing to do with being creative. You have to know how to move and maneuver and navigate through certain spaces. And like I said earlier, be willing to do the work because you got a lot of really dope people out there, but it's a lot of stuff that they're not willing to do. And I understand because it doesn't, it doesn't connect for us creative. Like what is, what does that have to do with me being creative? And it's like nothing yeah. immediately, but it does put you in a space where you can, you are afforded the, 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 the ability to do what you would like to do. And that takes time. Absolutely. So who, who, who are you, what was your inspirations, I guess, uh, you know, that, that made you want to sing or, or was it, you gotcha. grew up in the church or? No, um, I grew up listening to a lot of Stevie Wonder, um, a lot of Marvin Gaye, a lot of Danny Hathaway. Those are like the three main, um, artists that, um, made a huge impact on me, but there are many others, James Brown, Michael Jackson, Prince, uh, there's a whole, a whole, it's a whole, it's so many, it's too many. It's, it's really the spectrum of music itself, you know? Um, but I would have to attribute a lot of my sound and a lot of my style, excuse me, to those three artists. Um, and, and of course, growing up in the hip hop generation, just that sensibility. So this is why I call what I do hip hop. So I know people like to categorize it as R and B, which is fine. I make R and B music as well, but music soul child is really pursuing uh, conceptually hip hop soul. Music. Awesome. And uh, kind of before we started uh, the live, you told me that you literally just came from Philly like yesterday and were doing a performance. Yeah. And so you were. You were at the Roots Picnic, uh, is, is what, what I was, I heard. yeah, at the Roots Picnic. Um, so that was a whole lot of fun, very historic uh, uh, celebration of music, and I, I was honored to be there. So, and and I, I heard you're performing in Chicago in July. So, so what do you what do you enjoy most about performing live? Uh, the ability to do it. <laughs> Still twenty some <laughs> years. <laughs> that that's not lost on me how much of a blessing that is. Um, but uh, seriously, you know, the fact that it is something that I'm gifted at, I'm proficient at, I'm good at, something I can look, um, I can I can think of myself finally because of that. You know, I can look back on my life and say, hey, you did do something with your life. You did leave a mark in the world in a positive way, you know, and you do matter. You do have something to offer. Um, and that, that always sticks with me and, and it gets really challenging sometimes and you don't want to do it for a lot of reasons but then i remember you know not only you know just me if you take it outside of myself there are a lot of people who are not blessed with that opportunity so if not for yourself you know do it for them you know um but it feels good to have an identity in life and for me this is identity well part of it and i'm more than that but it plays a big role in 
um, I'm constantly reminded of that. So having that confirmation uh, is, is probably the best part. And then just being able to do something cool, like sing songs that people like. You know, it's really, it's really awesome. Yeah. So I'm, cur I'm curious what being on the road is like in, in your 20s and being on the road, not mm. not in your 20s. What, what's, <laughs> the, what's the big way of putting it? Yeah. <laughs> in the beginning, bounce back. But when, when, them, when them joints start hurting and you wake up in pain and don't know where it comes from, yeah, it's, it hit different. Uh, yeah. like I got, the, the, shake back is, the shake back is a struggle. I, I can tell you that. Bro, it's crazy. It's crazy. And, you know, you, you forget that you're not that... 20 you know year old so and so like i'll be 45 this year and i forget that i'm gonna be 45 like because I'm, <laughs> I'm 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 so stuck in this idea of myself being this certain way um you know and life has a way of reminding you like hey bro you know uh you know you can't do that anymore right okay <laughs> there we go <laughs> And then you got you know, so, but but you figure it out. You figure it out. Yeah. Well, well, I'm glad. I'm glad you didn't start your career coming in with all the flips, like genuine and all this, all this extra stuff. Yeah. Because it, that was it, not it's hard to maintain keep, that. Yeah. No diss to them, but but this is why I keep trying to explain to people, like, yes, I know that I have a career of being known mostly for, you know, R and B music but I never entered into this as an R and B singer, you know, but it was the, it was the most available lane, so to speak at that time. You think of all of this as like traffic, it's like, yeah, I can go down these roads, but the lane is kind of wide open and you, you know, you can like make a lot of progress is, you know, if you get into this R and B lane, you know, and I was like, you know what, that makes sense. And people love R and B, so and I love R and B, so yeah. let's go. But that's why I've always <laughs> been sort of like a cut away from everything. I've always been adjacent, you know. And people yeah. almost like kind of forced me in there. It's like it's weird because I remember listening to my songs on the radio, you know, and it just felt like it just interrupted the programming, you know. It's like it's good, but it's not. One of these things is not like the other, you know. And I think, but that's the thing that, that, you know, I think was attractive to people about me because it was so different, because it was its own thing. And, and I, embra I learned to embrace it. But before I was, I was a little subconscious about that. It's like, I don't think I'm supposed to be here. And I'm like, nah, nah, you're good. No, let's keep going. Let's keep going. <laughs> okay. If you say so. Thank you. And speaking of performing, you gave a virtual performance during the heart of the pandemic. If everyone remembers that yeah. in 2020, yeah. <laughs> that seems so long. It was like the year that never ended, but mm. then it also seems so long ago. It's such a weird time, but right, you, right, you yeah. were, you were incredible. And you gave a virtual oh, performance you. in 2020 to America's armed forces. Right. I what motivated that. you to share your gift with service members and their families at that time? Um, because it, it, I, I thought about it, it's like, okay, yeah, it, we're, we're, we're entering into a, a pandemic and, you know, it's challenging for us civilians, but I can only imagine what it's like for you guys, you know, and the things that I, can, I can't even imagine or think about that you may have to deal with, you know, in, in the, in the way, in the way of security, you know, because I'm sure that a lot of that came up. Like, okay, what does this mean? Like, um, how 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 do we prepare? How do you prepare for something that it's never happened before? Frankly, like, at least not in modern right. times. Like, how do we approach this? Like, what do we have to look forward to? Are we going to get to go back home? Are are people safe? Like, so I was I just wanted to almost be like a healthy distraction, you know. And the fact that I was even requesting it was an honor, you know, because. The last thing people want to do while they having a crisis, you know, is to hear somebody sing some songs. But it's like, but on the contrary, you know, some people they they need that, you know, they need that shift of perspective. Like, you know what? Let me chill. Let me calm down. Let me just listen to this dude sing some songs so I can like, you know, refocus and you know get back to it rather than being overly stressed and overwhelmed by all of these things and what to do and what ifs and all of that. So. I was grateful that I was available to even do that, you know, so, yeah. 
Yeah, but you bring up a good point too, just about people wanting to hear your music. Like I can remember the first time I heard Teach Me, the first time I heard mm. B-U-D-D-Y. So in those mm. moments, it's like, yes, I want to go back and take my mind to a different time where things were good and they were right. better, normal, whatever. But how does it make you feel just to know that your music does <laughs> touch people? <laughs> it does touch people yeah, right. so deeply, you know? Um. Uh, uh, so, you know, I'm sure we've all heard this before about us creatives being insecure about a lot of things because we're extremely sensitive individuals and we need to be in order to be, you know, um, vessels of this, uh, of this creativity and of these messages and of these, these vibes, you know, we have to be open. So yeah. we tend to live very complicated lives, very, very complicated lives. And, you know, growing up, we don't understand why we're always outcasted as the weirdo. And it's like, because bro, you, you were just, you just one of those special ones, dude. And you know, I know you don't get it right now, but everything that you're going through today is going to help you be better at what you need tomorrow. Um, right. So to see that actually happening, it's almost like confirmation and, and validation you know, that I know I wasn't just a weirdo. I was, I was, I was, I was <laughs> put here for a reason. Thank you. Right. You know, so it feels good. I know I just took it super deep, but you know, I could have gave, given you the, the political answer, but I'm gonna give you the honest answer. That's what's really happening with us creative people. And they try to coach us to be more diplomatic about it because we don't want to be off putting because we don't know how people are going to receive us saying the things that we say, but I think that it's yeah. more important to be to be honest and to be candid. That way, it it we can be more appreciated because when you don't do that, then it's very easy to sort of dismiss. I was like, oh, so you just gonna you just gonna keep doing that? It's like uh, I hope so. You know, <laughs> we don't always know how it's gonna turn out. So mm -hmm. to get so much love and to get so much uh, adoration and admiration and and respect from people um, telling me what they tell me about how they're impacted by what I do, that feeds me, you know, that lets me know, hey, you're doing something that matters. So whenever the bad vibes come up and, you know, and you start thinking weird because you just feel like you're not being seen and you're not being heard and um, you're not understood because most people don't live how you live in the world, um, it helps you to sort of center and be like, because you have to be this way so that you can do what you do for people who need it, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. Well, we are definitely grateful and appreciative for your voice and your talent. They are truly gifts. Thanks. Let's talk about the verses though. So you did okay. our verses with Anthony Hamilton. It gave us chills. I'm a big fan of the verses, like the Isley Brothers and Earth, Wind & Fire verses. Really Some people have streamed it on YouTube and I, I will go back and watch it and listen while I clean my house or whatever, like, Love, love, love right. it. <laughs> so that matchup was definitely history in the making as well as your matchup with Anthony Hamilton. We were mm -hmm. super, super excited for that. And you guys showed up and showed out. So how mm -hmm. were you approached to participate in that? And how did you prepare for it? So that's what's really interesting. Um, you know, I know we were just talking about the pandemic and, um, you know, how challenging that is to this day. People are still recovering. Um, from that, excuse me, I, br I bring that up because that actually triggered sort of like, you know, a series of events for myself. Mm -hmm. And I found myself having to deal with a lot of new things. Um, you know, I'm so used to being on the road and running around and being busy, but when you are sort of forced to not be busy and sit down and yeah. you know you don't have nothing to do you know it's interesting <laughs> how a lot of a lot of stuff comes up that you kind of indirectly or sometimes maybe you know actively been running away from and you know we were talking about loosely earlier about how you know i'm from philly and how you know there's certain reasons why i made a decision to move away you know um a lot of things like that for me, you know, a lot of those things came up and I thought that, you know, if I move into a new area, I get a new perspective, fresh perspective, 
I can kind of like, you know, build my life in a, in a, in a, in a better way. And that did happen. Um, but when you're left to sit in your stuff, you know, that's where the real work starts to happen. Yep. And it, 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 it impacted me in a way that I didn't expect and I wasn't prepared for. And I'm saying all of this to say because the versus thing came up before it actually happened. And I just remember thinking to myself, hmm, I don't think I'm ready to be on such a big stage in the state that I'm in. I don't think I'll be a cool hang. I think I'm gonna be, I think I'll be a little too emo and I think I'll be a buzzkill. So let me just go ahead and start working on some stuff. And it took me a little while. And thankfully I was able to work through a lot of things. I know I'm being vague, but I'm, I'm cause it can get, it can get super deep, but that's not yeah. what we're No, for. you're good. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make is um, to answer your question about preparing. I didn't really have a lot of time to prepare because I was so focused on healing. So the last thing that was on my mind was that, but then it came back yeah. around as, you know, as blessings rarely do. So when it came back around, I said, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and take it up. And I don't know, it was, it was a little shaky because I didn't know how I was going to feel. You know, I was, you know, I was still, you know, managing, a lot of complex things at the same time. And I don't know if you're like, maybe you might look at it differently, but that's the re that's the, that is the reason for my disposition on stage. You know, my, that's why I'm like, it's kind of awkward. I don't know. And then I'm, I'm going up against Anthony, who that's, that's the bro. Like, I love him. Yeah. And then I have all of these people, you know, in the background, oh, you better crush him. You better, I'm like, man, <laughs> it's not a, it's not a fight like y'all do know yeah. this is all in fun you know so right. when i got on stage and i had my people rooting for me and there's the backstage chatter and it's like i get on stage and i'm like am i supposed to punch him in the face now like i don't know what's happening what's going on because <laughs> i thought it was just about celebrating you know some songs but everybody started right. making rivalry and i'm like i don't feel that way about him like i love this guy i'm, I'm going to have fun so I start off a little awkward, but then eventually I start, okay, this is supposed to be, you know, I'm supposed to be, you know, taking shots at him, but it's supposed to be all in fun. And, he was, and he's a really good sport too. So, and it was really cool. And the quiet is kept, a little fun fact, there was supposed to be an intermission. There was, we were supposed to do a, a certain amount of songs. We were supposed to take a break and then we were supposed to carry on. I was supposed to change my outfit and everything. But I think the pacing was so good. After about more than half the show, I remember talking to one of the uh, one of the sound people in the back, and I was like, "Hey, um, not complaining, but when is the intermission?" They were like, "We're just gonna keep going. It's sound. You're doing great. Like, okay, <laughs> sure. I guess I guess this is a hit." So it was a lot of audibles being called, you know, that's, you know, again, if you look at it again, you'll, I'm giving you the background with all for, for all the, 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 all the stuff that was going on on stage, all the, you know, all the talk and all the stuff. It is just, it, I'm sure it'll look different now, but um, a lot of it was freestyle. A lot of it, you, you know, know, at least from, from my side, I can't really speak for Anthony's side, but from my side, a lot of it was freestyle. And I think that, I think I needed to do it that way because I feel like at that time, you know, I don't recommend this because it's always important to prepare. But I think that at that time, if I would have prepared more than I did, I would have started to overthink it and it would have been really weird. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to go out there. I'm just going to do what I do and have fun. And I hope the people feel it. Yeah. Well, yeah. The people, well, the people definitely felt it. And uh, like I said, those versus challenges, when you got two legendary uh, artists uh, such as mm -hmm. yourself and, and Anthony Hamilton, the, the world mm -hmm. wins. You know what I'm saying? We, we yeah, win exactly. as, as consumers of the music because yeah. it, it just it, it's taking us down memory lane. And like you said, the yeah. healthy distraction from whatever's going on. Yeah. And I appreciate you being real kind of vulnerable to like what 
the lead up to it, right? You 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 seem yeah. pretty authentic since I since for the past um, you know thirty you know, minutes I've had had a conversation with you. It's part of my healing. It's part of my pact to myself. Like, bro, you have to start, you know, letting people in and letting them know that you are a person as well. You know, you can't yeah. keep your guard up, um, thinking to yourself that you have to live up to this idea of perfection or something. I don't know. Um, and what what triggered that was, you know, as I spoke about briefly, um, is my process of going through what I went through. I had to, um, I had to unpack a lot of things and I had to like really reconcile a lot of things and I had to like heal and, and accept and forgive. I, have to, I had to do all of that. So now this is just me honoring that process so that I don't you know, go back to those spaces. I don't ever want to go back there. Yeah. No, nah, no, nah, we appreciate it. And uh, like, you, like you said, you, you're humanizing yourself uh, to, to people that kind of put you on a pedestal as, a, as an artist or being on right. TV or whatever the case may be. So uh, we definitely appreciate that. And in the, as military members, uh, we face the same challenges of, of, mm. of, you know, being at a certain rank and then people looking right. at you like you got it all together, but you, you struggling right. on the inside as well. And you, there's a lot of unpacking. And uh, I, I can tell you myself, I've, I've lived most of my life in, in a survival mode because of my upbringing and, and just, you know, yeah, exactly. And so this survival mode to where, you know, it, it's, it's, I understand why I li you know, I was raised that way, but it doesn't. It's not conducive to a a, a loving environment. You know what I'm saying? No. Being a survivor at the time. So, but but so, it but it got you to where you are now. Correct. That was my thing. I had to learn. Okay, how you've been worked to get you here. Okay, that's no longer necessary. What is necessary is for you to. Um, just upgrade and, and and elevate, but you can't do that if you keep holding on to that. So you got to let that go, so that you can hold on to what's going to push you forward. So I think that now I'm trying to sort of inspire people more so in that way because I I, I made it out to the other side of what I was under. I'm, it's still work. You know, yeah. just like anybody like you reach certain you know levels and you reach a certain status yeah I, it may seem like i figured it all out no i figured out how to get here i still got more work to do though you know yeah. so i highly encourage people to connect you know with with themselves as much as possible because it's through that that's going to help you to get to those next levels well, music don't don't send me a, a bill for this therapy session that you just had with me. So, uh, so I, you know, I, don't, I don't get paid to the fifteenth, man. So we it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. The fact that but, I'm able to even you know um, uh, uh, expound on this at all, and for it to be received and understood, like that's payment enough because again, it's confirmation for me. Like, yeah, dude. Like, okay, you figure some things out. All right, you know, so just like your music, you can you can also help people with this, you know, for whoever, you know, needs it and 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 forever it's it's for, you know. So and I get that a lot, by the way. So it's really funny. And I don't even think of myself as I talk to my publicist Mocha all the time, and she would say, like, you need to start speaking like how we talk, you know, in public. Like you need to start doing that. And yeah. that was really yeah. I was really like, nah, don't know if I want to hear that. They just want to hear these songs, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but then it got to the point where I couldn't, I could not talk about it, you yeah. know, because I think it was starting, for me, it started to feel like it was undermining the prog the process, the progress. So it's like, no, you have to, you got to celebrate that. You got to honor that. Like you just went through some stuff. You know, and if nobody's going to, and they can if they don't know, and they won't know if you don't say. So start talking yeah. about it. And the people that know what you're talking about is going to be like, hey, yeah. good job. So, you know, I appreciate you even, you know, uh, having that sentiment. So thank you. No, absolutely. And um, so you've inspired a bunch of 
people in general, but uh, specifically a lot of new artists, new artists, and you actually started collaborating with them. With, and you got a collaboration with Earth Gang uh, that merged yeah. their influence, R and B new sound. So, what's it like yeah. uh, yeah. kind of working with the new generation? Oh, it's dope, man. I mean, I you know keeps me from feeling like I'm washed, you know. Um, I still feel like old head on the block, which is fine, which is fine. I don't mind being the old head. It's, it's okay. Oh, you the OG. You OG yeah, now. No, yeah, yeah. And I and I embrace that, you know, because that's a, you know, as a, it's almost like a, a badge of honor, you know. So I definitely love the fact that, and, and it's, 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 a lot of it is by request, you know. It's not like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get in there and, and and stay in the game and stay hip. It's like no, people don't like saying no. We want to work with you, and it's like, oh, thank you. I'm honored, you know. And I don't try to come in and throw my weight around or try to call myself schooling the young bucks. I just, I do my part, you know. Sometimes it's like we got this part written or whatever. All you got to do is do this, and it's like cool. And then other times, like, what would you do? I'm like, I'm glad you asked. This is what I would do, you know? So it's a collaborative effort. And then I'm also thinking about the new generation who respectfully don't even know who I am, but through working with people that they do know, that introduces them to me from a different way. And then they, and then they have to go. And, and some of them say, oh, you the guy that my mom used to play. You know, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm that guy. Yeah. In the well, car, don't, feel, don't feel bad that... We got kids don't. that don't even know. Don't I feel don't. bad because people don't even know that uh, Ray J and Brandy are, bro are brothers and sisters. I, I just saw that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I don't because I, under I understand how, you know, a little bit more now. I understand how life works. You know, it, they, they, life works in waves, you know, life works in waves. And, you know, everybody, you can't expect everybody to know about all, to, you can't expect everyone to know about all the waves. You know, yep. yeah. so they, they 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 show up whenever they show up. You know, it's kids that just got here. You know, and yeah. they don't know they don't have the context. You know, until they're exposed to it. My niece, as a matter of fact, <laughs> at the at the Roots picnic, that's the first time she's ever seen me perform. I've known that girl her whole life. <laughs> we you know we have a relationship and we're good. But in that moment, and she said it, she said, I didn't know that you could sing like that. Because I don't, I don't, in my personal life, I'm, I don't live my life as music soul child. I mean, I'm, I'm uncle, you know? And I just saw this spark in her eye, like, hey, you're a, you're doing something special. You, you somebody, you. yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, I, I gotta, you know, I can't wait to see her again. It's like, okay, all right, now let's don't get brand new on me. <laughs> like, I'm still uncle. <laughs> it's okay, you know. So, but I'm I'm saying that to say, like, I don't I don't take it, you know, negatively. I just accept that that's what it is. Some people just don't know who I am, but I've always had that perspective. Even people would be like, man, you need to stop saying that. I was like, what? No, it's true. And when, and when I'm in front of certain audiences, especially audiences and places in the world that I've never been before, you know, I would make a note of that. I would give that disclaimer. I would preference certain things that I say by, you know, I don't know how many people know who I am. And people around me are like, man, you need to stop saying that, man. You need to stop selling yourself short. It's not that I'm selling myself short. I'm being realistic. You can't expect me to, you, you can't, you can't, uh, expect me to expect that everybody knows who I am. That's not a reality. That's how you, that's how you, your mind starts playing tricks on you. And then you feel offended when somebody don't know who you are. And it's like, no, it just is what it is. And that, that kept me, you know, grounded. That kept me humble, you know, it helped me to appreciate things that happens versus, you know, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It, uh, uh, feeling entitled. You know, and, and, and thinking that it's supposed to happen because I'm me. Like, oh, no, you are who you are, but some people just don't know who that is. Yeah. So. And I did want to say earlier, you talked about your music and um, how your fans are relating to it. And I love yeah. music. I think like everyone else on the, on this interview today. Um, yeah. And I actually have a, a, a couple of albums I land on when I, you know, 
need some pick me up or need to relate. Okay. And your album on my radio is like an album that's gotten me through I... a lot. I look crazy singing it in the car. Um, <sighs> and if you leave with Mary J. Blige, mm. you and I actually in my car, we sing that together. You and oh. I, I, I sing the Mary J. Blige part. Um, mm -hmm. She can do it a little bit better than me, just a oh, little bit. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, but I just wanted to. <laughs> you said that earlier, and I was like, I gotta let him know. Like that's um, an you. album. I mean, I love your all your albums, but that one to Thank me, you. I just love so much, and that's on my list of places to land when I need to uh, mm. smile in the car, cry in the car. Uh, but I still drive safe the yeah. whole time. <laughs> no, <good job. laughs> but I just <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, I wanted that, to let you know. Yeah, no, you and I, I have a that. duet. Um, yeah, yeah I, you just don't know it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that album is a roller coaster. Uh, so, so it's a lot of things going on. All, all of my albums are that way, but that one in, in particular, you know, it has some. Yeah, it gets it gets pretty emotional. Uh, on, I on love it. Song. Yeah, that's a good one. Brings, it's a good one. Thank it you. It brings out all the feelings. I was like, this yeah. Is, I didn't know I had so many feelings. So, right. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I but like I love instance, it. But I wanted to like for instance uh, the uh, the um, the song uh, back again. Yeah, that song is actually a song about somebody coming back after a breakup. You know, so it's like, wait, why are you here? I, th I, I thought we yeah. were over, but oh, here you are back yeah. again. <laughs> okay, well, welcome back. It's okay. <laughs> Teddy. Oh, good. oh, what happened to old boy? Oh, that didn't work out. Oh, wow. Well, hey, you hungry? You get some food? <laughs> like bygones, you know, but yeah. it's, it's such a complex, you know, circumstance, you know, but a lot of my songs, if not all of my songs, I'm just trying to show just different perspectives. I'm trying to introduce, um, you know, a, a conversation that may need to be had um, and some options on how to respond. You know, you ain't got to be petty, you know. The reason why they're back is proof that maybe they learned some things, you know. Yeah. And just, just take the W, bro. Don't mess yeah. it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I love that. And I, I listen to that one a lot, too, because it kind of put me in the moment of when they come back. But when they yeah. don't, I listen to that song, too, because I'm like, I'm kind of glad that they didn't. So <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> Oh, I hope they're not watching this right now. But um, ah! <laughs> but the people that are watching right now are, are our service members. <laughs> our service members in America's Armed Forces. Oh, man, Emily. Uh, and their families are watching us live. And we're also excited you're here. I'm obviously very excited you're here. And if you do decide Mary J. Blige is not who you want to sing that song with anymore, mm, just like, mm. no. Um, but what would you like to say to all of our armed forces and their families watching with us today? Oh, um, first and foremost, God bless you all. Um, you are very necessary, very important, and we appreciate you, even though some of us are dummies and idiots and don't acknowledge how important you are. Um, we thank you. Um, uh, please stay encouraged. Please stay motivated. Um, please, please stay positive. Um, uh, I'll be praying for you all. And, and we love you. And thank you. Yes, love it. Short and sweet. Your fans are also tuned into the live stream as well, and you're receiving mm. a lot of love. So Shauna says that it's such oh, a treat wow. to see you today. Jennifer says on behalf of her family, you're an amazing person for giving people relief from the fear and stress of COVID. Val says music is speaking. Life is complicated, but there is meaning to its complexity. Um, and Jaquay wants to know, do you have a routine for both before and after you perform? Um, I wake up, I get dressed and I go do my thing. That's about it. Because a lot of the times I need a lot of rest. So sometimes I wake up and this is probably not a good idea, but you know, old habits. Sometimes I wake up maybe like an hour before I get on stage. And it, it, it's mostly because I've been running around and ripping and running 
and I need as much rest as possible. So, um, you know, my people know it's like we don't we're not gonna bother him until we absolutely need to go get him. But I'm already, you know, I, I have him locked down on muscle memory. So I wake up, I do some vocal warm ups, probably not enough. I drink some water if I need to. If it's too cold, I drink some tea. Um, and I'll probably just, you know, just start talking, you know, not not anything too much, but just to kind of, you know, get myself in the rhythm of, you know, using my voice so that I'm not just the very, very first thing I'm doing when I wake up is sing. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm conscious enough to not be a full idiot, um, but I probably could have a better routine, especially getting older because, you know, your bounce back game ain't as, as it used to be when you're in your 20s and 30s. So, and I'm learning that. So I take more naps, I drink more water, um, I take um, certain, um, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, measures. I take certain measures to de-stress, you know, yeah. so I can calm and I can, you know, be my best self. Sometimes I don't win that fight, but you know, most time, most times I do. Most times I do. So, um, but speaking of that, it's it's reminded me because I just had a conversation with someone about that. It's reminded me that I need to get a more of more a more uh, extensive um, uh, preparation process. You know, I need to start implementing some levels of self care and um, yeah. and and just just zenning. You know, instead of feeling like I gotta ah, 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 that's what I'm used to survivor mode. Just go, right. go, go. It's like, bro, <laughs> calm down. It's gonna be okay. All right. So I'm I'm working on it. <laughs> No, it's good. No, life is, is like that sometimes, right? Where we just get on that wheel and don't know when to slow mm -hmm. down. So, mm -hmm. you know, it is what it is. I want to shout out my mom really quickly because she is tuned in and she um, mentioned just about your vulnerability. <laughs> yes, because if it was not for my mom, I would not be a music fan, right? Because she played the music oh, in the household. So, right. my right. Right. My mom. Out so mom. she said she could tell. What was that? I said, shouts out to mom. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so she said she could tell you were speaking from your heart. And um, I know you mentioned that vulnerability is it's new for you. So more confirmation that that we love that from you. Jennifer also says, stay unapologetically you. And Bao chimed in again and said, you ain't got to be petty. He's speaking to me. And you're speaking to me, too, because this somebody coming back business. So we don't do that. <laughs> like Summer says, you're an ex for a reason. <laughs> but yeah. He's this, some this, problem this, now. Facts, <laughs> facts, facts, facts. However, <laughs> however, however, sometimes, sometimes life will throw you a do over. Sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes, because sometimes you may not realize that, you know, it, it was you as well. Okay. It was you as well. So now life is saying, okay, it was because you thinking it's, it's them and they thinking it's you and it was the both of y'all. <laughs> and now y'all yeah. realize. You're not, you're not I, wrong, I, I, but. <laughs> I kind of, so, so, so you, right. you talking about it. <laughs> but you just realize, that, you know, y'all tried to, you know, have a go at it with other people only for what to happen, for y'all to come back. Now, here's an opportunity for you to, you know, let's try it again, people. And if you don't get it right this time, do not be upset with what you've been forced to settle for. But you know, what do I know? I just write songs about people for like five years. But you, know I mean. yeah. you, you know a lot more than I do. Yeah, this this interview that went all the full circle, like the full 360 of the spectrum. From, hey, from hey, the that's what to, pet, to pettiness to everything. Uh, I, <laughs> It's but I got a few comments on my page as well. I want to read to you. Okay. Um, I, I got Tony Renee. Uh, she just said, "I just want to say hi." In in the in the, hey, I just want to I, sing. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got that. Yeah, bam. Good job. Good job. And then uh, <laughs> I got my cousin. I got to give a shout out to my cousin Chanel Battle. She, you know, I, that's one thing. I the family the family supports us, right? And so right. Uh, she she said this is an awesome interview. Um. I got Nicole Allen that says this interview has me crying, laughing, 
you all are on it today. So uh, we appreciate the, <laughs> the the tears, the laughter, the 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 pettiness, and everything else that comes in between with this interview. Uh, we, we appreciate you, brother. Where do you think these songs come from? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we, we let's get into uh, art, the artist Lucky Day. Uh, sampled your song mm -hmm. "Have Crazy" on his song "Over." So he received uh, recently received a nod from BET on helping to keep R and B alive. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I, what do you envision R and B will evolve to in the next decade? Oh, ah. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I I can't tell you what I envision um because i'm not that good i i can tell you what i would like to happen i would like for there to be and this may sound a little you know random but it's very um uh relevant i i i would hope that there would be more music education i feel like there's such a disconnect with um the offerings and the the consumption um and it's just not to wag my finger in any direction it's just an observation that I've, I've i've made for a while now i feel like there are way more artists out there that should be um, better off than they are and they're not because there is a misunderstanding of what it is they have to offer so it's almost as if they don't even exist um so i really would hope that R&B music or the arts in general would move more so in the direction of being more educated and having um, a higher level of understanding of what's happening, you know? And I feel like that will, that will be a, um, a huge contributor to the economy of the arts. I feel like there's not, um, there's not, a, there's not a huge appreciation in on, on a high level because of the lack of, um education so if people were more educated it all means it's being more smart it's just being more versed on what it is that we do um, on a technical level you know there was a time where people would study artists and they would read the liner notes and they would you know listen to the whole entire album now things have been made so you know microwavable that you can just get a song and you miss the whole story that this person was trying to tell you you know and it won't be for like you know five ten years i've had people tell me you know an album that i put out 10 years ago i just found out about this album this album is amazing thank you it was amazing then but you know it's okay you went into it it's okay everything in its own time so i think that there could be better curation um of artists I mean, thankfully we have satellite radio and we have these um, streaming platforms so that you can kind of curate your own playlist, which is cool. But I think that, you know, that's so subjective. I think that there needs to be some system put in place where artists can, can, can be closer to the, to, the, to, the, to the light, you know, versus you got to know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that knows it, or you just so happen to hear it on somebody's profile and be like, what is that, you know? But this person should be everywhere because of what they have to offer, you know, and not just sonically, but, you know, like, like how I do, like how people talk about me. There are people out there that I feel like should be talked about in the same way, but because they don't have the support, they don't have the means to get to those lanes. Um, and I really, I really truly believe that a big part of it is the education of what is it that we even do. You guys can appreciate it because I'm in this conversation with you all and you guys definitely express how much you appreciate it. Everybody don't think that way. Everybody don't feel that way. Everybody, they just they just don't have that exposure, you know? And plus, like I keep saying, life be life in. So the last thing they want to do is be up on all of these artists and what they're not part of their day and rightfully so. But I think that if there was a system in place that kind of helped them, you know, almost in a way of like, just social media, but strictly for artists, you know, and that you go on there and you're constantly, you know, getting notifications and information on who's out there, you know, as opposed to having to dig for it all the time. 
Everybody ain't on SoundCloud. Everybody ain't on Spotify. And if they are, they just stick to their own channel and their own station and their own, you know, cycle of artists. So I would hope, you know, it's a long window way of saying that, but I think about these things deeply. Um, I would hope that it moves more so in the direction of just that, just that classic traditional appreciation for your artists, you know, and you're not just following the trend or following the wave or following what somebody else is listening to. What do you like, you know? And you could be the difference for that artist. And we need all the energy that we could get. Money is cool, attention is fine, but that energy of keeping up with us and you know, showing up to our shows and buying our merch and saying our names, you know, that's really what's really important um, because we do this for a living. You might listen for it to us for recreation and we appreciate it, but we do this for a living. This is literally our lives. So I would hope that it moves in that direction. And I think that everyone will be better for it because you will get more out of the experience versus that's just the hot new song so I can do my little dance on TikTok. Like, no, this is a person talking about their life. Yeah, I think it's a little more than that. I mean, trick off on your own stuff if you want to. God bless you. But uh, can you come back? <laughs> I'm still here. Now, you so you're back on the road this summer. Um, the Juneteenth celebration in Baton Rouge featuring you and SWB is going to be epic. Oh, oh. So not only nice. are you a part of history, but this celebration commemorates the sacrifices of African-Americans and it celebrates our culture in this country. So what are your emotions ahead of the show? Um, well, since you put it that way, <laughs> I wish it was more. Um, yeah, I think that, you know, we as artists, we represent our own purpose, you know, in, in time and in history. And to share the stage with um, legendary artists is furthering, you know, that legacy. So to even be able to do that and, and, and to have amassed so much credibility and such a timeline where I can be perceived in that way. Um, and being a representation of uh, the success story of people that came before me, um, it means a lot. And we are so excited for new music. You dropped Made It in April with artist uh, Mike King. Oh, yeah. Mike. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> and there it is. There it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, what can fans expect from you soon? Any new projects besides uh, me and your duet that we're going to mm, write? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> Man, that's, you know, not not just that. Uh, the other right. Stuff, right. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> so people ask me that all the time. Are you working on a new album, a new album, a new album? So what I, what I tell people is I'm working on new music, you know, and there was a time where I wasn't motivated or inspired to do anything because, you know, I was I was unpacking and healing. So it doesn't really leave much room for anything else. But since I've come out of that space and I'm in a better space, um, I've been more productive. Um, I've been doing a lot of features like like the one that uh, you just talked about. Um, and I'm I'm I'm. I'm feeling a new sense of inspiration, um, and I'm and I'm I'm sort of figuring out what that is more and more. Um, it's different. It's different than what I have done. What I have done has just been me just working, you know, grinding, trying to stay in it, just pushing, 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 pushing. Now it's more so. Okay, this whole time I've been doing my job, and from what people tell me. I've been doing a good job at my job. Now it's okay. I want to know what it looks like and what it sounds like to do me because I have yet to really fully do that yet. So, so that, that, that brings a, a whole nother level of, of excitement for me because I, I want to know what that sounds like. You know, I, I mean, I hear it, you know, in the way that I do in my own head. Hey, but to hear, you know, what, to hear what I, I hear out there, you know, and it came from, it came just purely from me and not 
from a whole bunch of outside influences, you know, um, trying to keep up, you know, with everybody else or, you know, trying to um, meet uh, an expectation of a record label or, or, you know, don't take this the wrong way, but even you guys, you know, um, I have to start, I have to start moving from my own voice, you know, and I have to have the faith and confidence that it's going to be good enough uh, for you guys and not thinking, well, what if they don't like it? And what if what I do sucks? And what if it don't meet the same, you know, hit the same like the other stuff? It's like, dude, you can't think about that. You can't think about that. You have to remember that there was a time where they didn't know who you were and you did what you did and they liked it. Okay, why can't it be you can do more stuff that they like, you know? And I think that sometimes you can find yourself on the, the not so good side of this business and it can have a negative impact on your self image. And if you choose to, or allow yourself to believe that, then, you know, you'll just slip away. And that's, you know, I, I believe is a lot of the reason why you don't hear from a lot of people after a certain while, because it just, it just gets too much. And it's like, I'd rather just stop and go do something else. Um, but it's too, it, it shines too bright inside of me to just walk away. And it hurts to stick around, you know? But I, I think that that was a lot of the reason why I had to go through that process that I just talked about not too long ago, because I had to overcome a lot of things because it's like, bro, you got a whole lot more work to do. And it's gonna be that much harder if you're trying to carry all this stuff. So I'm gonna need you to work through whatever you need to work through. Let me know when you're ready because we got to move forward. And it's just really exciting. I'm, I'm really looking forward to what what's going to come out now. You know, I can't wait to hear it. I know that sounds crazy, but yeah, I can't wait to hear it. No, it does not sound crazy at all. So the word on the street is that there might be a documentary in the works. <sighs> <laughs> Listen, we're okay. trying to get exclusive. We're trying to get exclusives here. No, because we have so I have like this bittersweet love hate relationship with that because man, I I haven't really worked through a lot of stuff that I feel comfortable talking yeah. about yet. So mm -hmm. documentary, like like what's 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 gonna be the extent of that documentary? Are we just covering my, my professional timeline? Are we going to go back to the beginning because that gets a little complicated and you know I still got I still got some stuff I need to like resolve before I can get in front of a camera and and speak about it. I don't like talking about things while it's it's processing, you know. Yeah. Um I I want to be on the better side of things, you know. And again, that's what the process that I keep referring to has taught me is like, dude, you can't hide from yourself. You can't run away from you. Like you got to deal with it. Yeah. You know, you can't keep throwing yourself in your work and hoping that it 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 be the bigger voice than the other stuff. It's like, no, man, you got to work through that stuff, and it's going to take time, and it's going to hurt, but it's necessary. And the more you work through it, the better you'll be better for it, and and the more you'll the the, the better you can assist other people who may be going through stuff because then you're coming from a place of knowing, you know? Yeah. Well, when it's time, where can our, where can our viewers go to kind of keep up with your new drops, your new music and all things music solo child. So I, you know, I participate in social media <laughs> here and there from time to time. So I'm on social media as music soul child. That's just music soul child. M U S I Q S O U L. C H I L D um, on Instagram, on Facebook. I think I might be on Twitter. I think that's all I really have. I haven't really gotten into any of the the new stuff. It's it's like a it's like a new social media the platform TikToks. coming. I'm not. On, I'm not on. Whatever. We're not going to see you doing a dance. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, I'm not as active as I probably should be. Um, just because I'm one of those weird artists, you know? Um, and people like to lead you to believe, you don't care about your fans. It's not that I don't care about my fans. I'd rather just see them in person. So that's just me. 
Awesome, awesome. And so, and, and for, we're gonna we're gonna plug our our social media as well. So for our chief chat, okay. was, yeah, this this episode will be available on YouTube and Spotify. Uh, you can rewatch with your friends or catch up with past episode. Also, be sure to join us back here at 11 a.m. Central on June 14th to hear from Bronze Star Medal recipient and seven-time military photographer of the year, Jeremy Locke, and his wife, entrepreneur and television personality, DeAndre Simmons. Also, tune in on June 23rd when actor Brad Garrett joins the chat. So, music, man, this has been such a, uh, a enlightening conversation that we've had. Uh, I think... I think we've done a little healing on the on the on the on the, on the actual oh, interview. Okay. Uh, just cool. just talking cool. about just different parts of life and uh, and I I kind of took a lot of things that you were talking about as far as uh, just the tr just the the journey of of life, right? And you go through where you got to forgive people and forgive yourself and, and and do all these other things that come along that's with the, with making, no, that's, the, that's the that's what I've learned has been the most important part the forgiving of yourself. Yeah. You know, um, sometimes things happen to you and for whatever strange reason, you assume accountability for that. And it's like, but it happened to you. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I think it starts to get into the, the space of, well, I'm sure, at least for me, it gets into the space of, well, if I was smarter and if I was more aware, then I could have caught it and I, you know, it wouldn't have happened. It's like, you can't control what happens to you. Correct. But Correct. What, but but what you but what you can control if you choose to is how you choose to respond and react out of that. And I would I started to focus more so on that instead of dwelling on what happened. It's like you can't unhappen what happened, but what you can do is contribute to what's going to happen next. So I wanted to be able to do that. Because a lot of people come to me for advice, and I'm like, bro, I don't know. But now I can start, you know, <laughs> talking about it, you know, from a realistic yeah. perspective. And and instead of just being, well, you know, you just got to you just got to give it all you got and and push through. Like, ah, uh, no, I want to know what what did you do? Oh, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and yeah, because you seem like you're doing okay. Well, I mean, yeah, because this is how it went for me, and and I get everybody's circumstance, situation is different. But I feel like there are some some basic fundamental things that apply to everyone. So th it's those things that I'm, I'm, I'm I focus more so on. You know, yeah. however you need to do it, this is what needs to happen. I don't know how, you know, how exactly that's going to work for you. What are the details and the mechanics of how it's going to work for you? But you're here, and you need to get here. Whatever you need to do to get here is this is where you need to be. You know. Um, here are some ideas, here are some options, here's what I, what worked for me, um, hopefully it works for you. And if not, you know, maybe talk to some other people, you know, and find out how they got to that, 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 that place. But whatever you do, you need to move forward. So yeah, I'm glad that I can impart, you know, on you guys some stuff that I went through to help, you know, shine some light yeah, on some things you, for you. you, you, you. You drop some gems, uh, and, and of course, you know your mu your music is timeless and it has touched so many people, and it, it will live uh, way longer than any of us will be on the earth. So, mm -hmm. uh, just appreciate mm -hmm. you for sharing your gift of of, of music you. with the world. Uh, you, you, like I said, you, you 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 got Emily on here being petty to her her ex because of a song, <laughs> and and, I'll, and and Kiana Kiana Mama making breakfast in the morning. Uh, play. I I I'm wondering what she was cooking. I don't know if it was bacon and eggs or, or something like that, but just, <laughs> just like that. those stories or those two instances, you know, is is you know, multiplied exponentially across the world mm -hmm. on, on how your your music impacted them. So, man, thank you for cool. spending the last hour with us. Uh it was a, no it was problem. a great conversation, plenty of all emotions involved and we just appreciate you. No, I appreciate you for having me. Thank you. And if you don't if you don't mind um uh, staying on after the live so we can kind of say our formal goodbyes but uh we're okay. gonna, uh yeah so the 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 nation uh our nation's heroes really appreciate um you being on the show with us and we wish you all the best uh and chief chat out thank you